On my LinkedIn, my headline says, I help people land their first data job in 90 days. And often I get DMs or I get comments from people saying, that's not realistic. Why are you pumping that you know, into the world? Like, why are you lying to people? It's impossible to land your first data job in 90 days. Welcome to the Data Career Podcast, the podcast that helps aspiring data professionals land their next data job. Here's your host, Avery Smith. All right, I want you guys to think back about something in the past that you thought was impossible, but now you have done it. It might be something mental. It might be amount of money that you make. It might be surviving as a dad. I know that's one of the ones I've experienced recently. It might be something physical you did like running a marathon or maybe you did like some sort of uh, Spartan race or something very difficult that you thought you might not be able to do. You thought it was impossible. On my LinkedIn, my headline says, I help people land their first data job in 90 days. And often I get DMs or I get comments from people saying, that's not realistic. Why are you pumping that you know, into the world? Like, why are you lying to people? It's impossible to land your first data job in 90 days. And I hear that a lot. And today in this episode, I want to tell you guys, first off, how it is possible and how you can do it as well. But first, I need to tell you guys about why it is possible. So something I've learned from one of my mentors who I've obviously never met, I've just read about, is Robert Kiyosaki. He is the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you've never read that book, basically it starts out with him as a kid living on Hawaii and he's poor. He, he grew up poor and he has a friend and his friend is rich. And he's comparing the lifestyle of him and his family to his friend's family. And basically he's amazed by how rich this friend is. It's really like the friend's dad, you know, and that's why the book, the rich dad, the poor dad title comes from. And in the book, he says this line, and I want you guys to remember this line. He says, instead of saying it can't be done, start asking, how can it be done? I'm going to read that one more time. Instead of saying it can't be done, start asking, how can it be done? So instead of thinking something is impossible, you know, instead of that phrase coming to your mind or coming out of your mouth, think, okay, if it was possible, how would it be possible? You know, I don't believe this is possible, but let's just pretend here for a second that it is possible what would the steps be necessary for that to occur? And this is really valuable because we as humans are pre-programmed in our brains to not try sometimes. We, we just take the clues around us and think, ah, you know, this is what's been set by other people. This is what's been set by society. So I'm just going to follow, you know, and do whatever society says to do. But we are so much more and we are so much more powerful than that. We just don't realize it sometimes because we have to tease it out of our system. We have to ignore the rules that society has set up for us and reach for the greatness that we are destined for without paying attention to what you are supposed to be or what you are supposed to do. And that's exactly what Robert Kiyosaki is teaching here. Instead of saying it can't be done, start asking, how can it be done? So like I said, Robert grew up poor in Hawaii. He grew up around these huge mansions and he was from the wrong side of the tracks. He lived in a small home but he was able to see obviously people were having success in the same area as him. And he'd often would talk to his dad. He'd come home and say, Hey, you know, there's this mansion and I've talked to my friend and this and that. And the dad would often say, why are you even trying? It's impossible. It's so hard to be rich. It's impossible. The government, the state, the society, the circumstances have set us up where it's impossible for us to be rich. Why even desire that? Why even try? And he was able to hang out with his friend's dad get to watch his systems, model what his friend's dad did. And now Robert Kiyosaki has a net worth of over $100 million. What Robert's dad said was impossible. Robert proved him wrong. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you guys about today. You know, some of you guys are thinking, man, it's impossible to become a data analyst in 90 days. Or maybe you're already past the 90 day limit and you need to start a new 90 days. You know, instead of saying it's not possible, let's think about how it would be possible. So what would it take to land a data analyst job in 90 days? If you're just willing to to, to experiment a particle of faith here and be like, all right, Avery, I don't believe it's possible, but let's just put aside that belief here for a second and pretend I believe. I want to believe it's true. What would it take? Well, it would take thinking about this job hunt 
radically different than you probably are right now. And that's why, in fact, the book came out recently by Dr. Benjamin Hardy. It's called 10X is Easier Than 2X. In this book, he basically says, it's easier to 10X something than it is to 2X. And that seems very counterintuitive because obviously 10X is five times bigger than 2X. How would 10X be actually easier to do than 2X? But have you guys ever heard that phrase that doing what you did to get you here will not get you there? The idea is in order to actually 10X something, you have to do something so radically different that you kind of throw away everything you've been doing already and you try to start with something new. And it's just because in society, you know, on this data career journey, you've been told, including by me, so many things, right? There's so many different voices. There's so many different programs. There's so many different things going on. Everyone has their own different opinion, right? And also it's like what you've been told, like, oh yeah, it's, you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way, right? There's so many ways that you have been told on this data journey that you have to do things. But I just want to sit here for a second. I want to erase all boundaries. I want to erase all preconceived notions of your data career journey. And just sit with me here for a second and think with me, brainstorm with me, what would it actually take if it's possible to land a data job in 90 days from today? By the way, in fact, as of recording this, there's actually exactly 90 days left in 2023. By the time this comes out, it'll be a little bit less. But how can you, as an aspiring data analyst or as aspiring data professional, start your first data job January 10th? basically 90 days from when this podcast will come out. You know, I'm a big fan of New Year's resolutions, but what if we started the new year by achieving our goal? What if you have a goal to become a data analyst in 2024 and that happens in January? That's amazing, right? So let's talk about this. What would it actually take? Number one, we'd have to take the shortest path possible, right? If we're trying to do this in 90 days or even less than 90 days, you know, we want to take the shortest path possible. So what does that mean? What does that mean? We want to focus on speed. Speed is the important thing to us. Now you might be thinking, Avery, I don't really care about speed, but there's something that you probably haven't been thinking about that you need to be thinking about. And that is that for the majority of you guys, when you become data analysts, you will earn more money than you're earning now. You will have more earning potential than you have right now. You know, the students who go through the data analytics accelerator increase their salary on the other end by quite a bit. And so you might be thinking, that sounds great, Avery. But what you're not thinking about is every day you're not becoming a data analyst, you're missing out on the earnings that you would have been. And that's called opportunity cost. So basically, let's say it takes you, I don't know, two years to become a data analyst. You're missing out on two years worth of salary and raises in the time it takes you to become a data analyst. So speed is very important. So we want to take the shortest path possible. Now, the shortest path possible, what does that actually look like? To me, there's something that's very key in this that a lot of people miss. And that means that we're only going to learn a few of the things. We're only going to learn a fraction of the whole data analytics world. In fact, there's over 1,400 different data languages, tools, and softwares you could possibly learn on your data journey. It would take you lifetimes to learn all those. It would take you lifetimes to master those. And we don't have time for that. We have 90 days. So by default, we cannot learn all 1400 different tools, languages, and softwares that you might use as a data analyst on the job. We don't have time for it. We can only focus on a few things. So what things do we focus on? The things that have the highest ROI. Never heard of ROI? It's return on investment. It's used a lot in finance. For instance, if I spend a dollar and I got five back, you know, that's a 500% return on investment, right? If I spend $5 and I got one back, that's a 25% return on investment. Instead of thinking about ROI investment in terms of dollars, I want you to think about it in time. So we put in one hour and I guess we don't get out hours back. Instead, we get like attractive points or data points or data skills back. And so we want to focus on the skills that have the highest ROI. So when we're evaluating these skills, you know, these 1,400 different skills we could learn, which ones have the highest ROI? Well, we need to focus on two things. Which ones are used the most in industry for entry-level data analyst roles? And which ones are the easiest ones to learn, right? Because I love Python. I love Python. Python's my favorite data tool. But it's actually one of the tools that we cover the least in the bootcamp because it is so hard to learn. It takes a while to learn because not only you're learning data analytics, but you're learning how to program at the same time and then program in this confusing language of Python. Like it is not easy to program in Python at all. It is not easy. I promise you guys, it's not easy. So instead of focusing on things like Python, which are high on return, but the time investment is long, we're going to focus on things that are easier to learn. For example, data analysis with Excel. All of you guys pretty much know a little bit of Excel already. 
And so we just add a little bit into your Excel toolkit and bam, you know, data analysis with Excel. It just doesn't take a long time and it's a very valuable tool. In fact, I think it's the second most in demand data tool there is for data analysts. Boom. We can learn that very quickly in a couple hours. Number two is Tableau. Now Tableau is awesome because it's drag and drop. There's not a whole lot of coding. If you can figure out PowerPoint, you can figure out Tableau. And so I love Tableau because it's so easy to learn and we can make visualizations and graphs very quickly without having to learn any sort of coding. It's just drag and drop. If you can figure out, you know, how to use, I don't know, Sudoku, if you can figure out, you know, logic and just dragging and dropping things like PowerPoint, you know, things like, I don't know, iMovie, you can figure out Tableau. And so it is such a good return on investment because it doesn't take that much time. And all of a sudden we can make dashboards, visualizations, and it's really cool and really easy. So that's why we learned Tableau. Third, we learned SQL. SQL is just as powerful as many data tools. It's actually the most commonly asked for required data analyst skill. So it's the most important to learn. And it's really only about 20 commands. So in one afternoon, one week, you can become comfortable with SQL. And so between just Excel, Tableau, and SQL right there, if you can learn those three, you have three really powerful data skills. In fact, the three most commonly asked for data skills outside of Python for all data analyst roles. Now you can of course learn Python, you can learn R as well. But remember, we're focused on taking the shortest path possible from where we're at today to landing our first data job. So we have to ignore everything else, right? We have to ignore, you know, all the fluff, all the noise. We're focused on three things only because we're focused on speed. Because if we're not focused on speed, we're missing out. And I'm not even kidding, you guys. I'm not even kidding. We're missing out on tens of thousands of dollars. This is pretty common that people inside the data analytics accelerator, for example, go from $50,000 to $80,000, which basically means on a yearly basis, they're making $30,000 extra, which means every six months, you're not a data analyst, you're missing out on $15,000. Okay. And I guess we can go ahead and do the math here on how much that is a month. So basically that would be 15,000 divided by six. So every month you're missing out on $2,500 in that case, which basically means every day you're missing out on about a hundred bucks, 83 bucks every single day that you possibly could be earning. So the opportunity cost here is quite large. Okay. So we want to focus on speed and that means only focusing on Excel, only focusing on SQL and only focusing on Tableau. Those are the skills. Okay. That's one of the foundations of landing a job in 90 days is we're not going to learn everything. I recognize it. It's impossible to learn all of data analytics in 90 days. That is something I will say is impossible, but is it possible to land a data job in 90 days? Yes, it is. And you need to focus on the right skills and only those skills. The next thing you'd have to do is you have to get lucky. You have to get lucky on the job boards. It is hard to get interviews. It is hard to do well in interviews and it's hard to land jobs. So luck would definitely be part of it. But here's the cool thing. Luck is like a surface area. I like to think of it like rain falling from the sky or little nuggets of luck falling from the sky. And here we are on earth with nets and we're blindfolded and we're trying to catch these luck nuggets on earth with our little net. And it's hard. Sometimes we catch it. Sometimes we don't. What we do have control over is how big of a net we use. And so we can't always control what happens to us, but we can control the surface area, the, how large our net is to possibly catch these little nuggets of luck falling from the sky. So expanding your net in terms of luck means that you're doing everything that you can in your power to land a job. That means applying to a lot of jobs. It sucks applying to a lot of jobs, but guess what? Applying to a lot of jobs is part of the process and landing your job in 90 days. This means hundreds of jobs. You will have to apply to hundreds of jobs. I'm just telling you right now, you will have to at least apply to 50 plus jobs. Dare I say hundreds. And that's okay. That's part of the process because we are expanding our net of luck. This also means that we're talking to the right people, right? So instead of going to, you know, job postings that have, let's say 3,000 other applicants, we're going to job postings that have like five applicants that have like 10 applicants, ones that we can actually talk to the hiring manager or the recruiter. We can have a face-to-face -face conversation or a cold message, direct message conversation. You know, those types of things increases our net and increases our luck. Those things are really important to do. The other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to be convincing. When we do get those opportunities, we're going to, you know, they don't happen every day. So when they do happen, we need to take advantage of them. This means you're prepared for the interview one. And two, in order to get the interview, you have evidence that you can do what your resume says you can. This usually means having a portfolio. If you have a strong portfolio and you're convincing, you can talk the talk and you can show back it up with this portfolio. 
you're going to have an easier interview, you're gonna get more interviews and you're going to land more offers. So being able to be convincing is really important. That's one of the necessary ingredients in landing your job in 90 days. Just in review, if it was possible, right? If, if you're like, all right, Avery, I'll believe you for five minutes. If it's possible to land a job in 90 days, we would need to take the shortest path possible, which means not learning all the skills and only focusing on some of the skills. We'd have to expand our net of luck, which basically comes by finding really rich opportunities, talking to the right people, looking in the right places. We'd have to get lucky, right? We'd have to be convincing. We have to have a portfolio. We'd have to be able to talk the talk and walk the walk via the portfolio. And then lastly, we'd need to have some sort of a path that you can shadow, that you can model, something that's, that's been done before, right? I mean, of course you can do something that's never been done before, but it's always easier to do something that has been done before. So I would look to people who did land their data job in 90 days. On this podcast, I've interviewed Courtney Ballard. I've interviewed Stephen Tran. I've interviewed Aaron Sheena. They all landed their first data job in about 90 days. So pay attention to what they did. Pay attention to what other people did in the network. Chris French. Chris has been on this podcast. Go listen to the Chris French episode. He landed his first data job in about 90 days. There's other examples that I probably haven't interviewed that you might have seen. But study these people. What did they do? Why did it work? You know, a, a lot of time and a lot of time when I want to get something done, I go to someone who's an expert. I go to someone in the field. I think with the internet nowadays, you can learn everything for free. I really believe that. You can pretty much learn everything on the internet for free. So why do you pay for programs? Why do you pay for coaches? Why do you pay for mentors? goes back to that question. Speed. You guys, speed is everything. Remember, speed is, like I said, like $15,000 basically every six months or $2,500 every six months. Could you guys benefit from an extra $2,500 in your bank account every month? I know I could. So speed is important. That's the whole name of the game because speed equals not having that opportunity cost, right? So I hope this makes sense. I hope you guys feel the, the power here that we're talking about. Is it impossible to land a job in 90 days? It is not impossible, which means it is possible. It's hard though. It's hard work. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's definitely hard work, but I want to emphasize to you, it is possible. And if it is possible, you have to think, okay, has anyone done it? What did they do? How can I model them? And the answer is take a short path. Don't learn all the skills. Be able to walk the walk with a portfolio. Get lucky. Talk to the right people. Have a good network that basically is able to hand you the job, hand you the interview. And if you do those things, that is how it's possible to land a data job in 90 days. Now, if you want to learn more about this, about landing your data job in 90 days, and you haven't been to one of my webinars, you got to come to my webinars. There's a link in the description down below. I need you guys to make sure that you guys are all signed up for this webinar. I'll teach you the more details about this. Like, okay, what exactly in Excel do we need to know? What exactly in Tableau do we need to know? How do we get lucky on the job boards? How do we expand that network? How do I find job postings that only have 10 applicants instead of 10,000 applicants, right? I'll show you the details in the webinar, okay? Sign up, it's absolutely free, and it will help you create a roadmap that will help you land a day job as quickly as possible. I hope you guys found this useful. Have a great week, everyone. Bye.